Well, let's bring in our senior White House correspondent, Pamela Brown. Pamela, a lot to unpack right now in all of this. Uh, let's go through the major, major details. That's right. This is a more than 400-page report, and this Mueller's report lays out in excruciating detail how White House officials essentially saved Trump from himself in the obstruction probe, and it at times painted an unflattering picture of the Trump campaign and the conspiracy probe, but stopped short of accusing the president of criminal wrongdoing and determined that while the Trump campaign expected Russia's help, there was no coordination between the two sides. The more than 400-page Mueller report shows just how much the president feared the special counsel investigation when he first learned about it. Quote, the president slumped back in his chair and said, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm effed. And tonight we're learning why. The special counsel's report saying, quote, a thorough FBI investigation would uncover facts about the campaign and the president personally that the president could have understood to be crimes or that would give rise to personal and political concerns. The report contains a potentially damning list of ways the president tried to, quote, influence the investigation, but was unsuccessful. Mueller writing Trump was saved, quote, largely because the persons who surrounded the president declined to carry out orders or accede to his requests. Those requests included asking then FBI Director James Comey to end the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and ordering White House Counsel Don McGahn to get Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to fire Robert Mueller. The report says, quote, McGahn did not carry out the direction, however, deciding that he would resign rather than trigger what he regarded as a potential Saturday night massacre. I've been totally exonerated. The special counsel's conclusion ultimately contradicts the president's claim that he is totally exonerated on the issue of obstruction. Mueller writing, quote, the president's actions and intent presents difficult issues that prevent us from conclusively determining that no criminal conduct occurred. If we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. Based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, however, we are unable to reach that judgment. Mueller telling Congress it can rule on whether the president obstructed justice, concluding, quote, that Congress has the authority to prohibit a president's corrupt use of his authority. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee now requesting Mueller testify before Congress. Responsibility now falls to Congress to hold the president accountable for his actions. The report did conclude the Trump campaign did not conspire with the Russians to hack the 2016 presidential election. But Mueller says Trump's team knew, quote, it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts. Mueller found the president's written answers on collusion between the campaign and Russia, quote, to be inadequate, writing, quote, the president stated on more than 30 occasions that he does not recall or remember or have an independent recollection of information called called for by the questions. Other answers were incomplete or imprecise. But he ultimately decided not to subpoena the president, writing it would result in a substantial delay and adding, quote, we had sufficient evidence to understand relevant events. The special counsel also revealed that the president and his then personal attorney, Michael Cohen, had also heard the rumor that Russians had compromising tapes of Trump. Cohen received a text message from a Russian businessman that said, quote, stop flow of tapes from Russia, but not sure if there's anything else, just so you know. That businessman later said he'd been told the tapes were fake. In a press conference held before the report was released, Attorney General Barr defended the president's actions. There is substantial evidence to show that the president was frustrated and angered by his sincere belief that the investigation was undermining his presidency, propelled by his political opponents, and fueled by illegal leaks. Echoing President Trump's refrain. The special counsel found no collusion. There was no evidence of the Trump campaign collusion, no underlying collusion with Russia. So with the reports released today, a chapter has ended, a legal chapter has ended on the coordination uh, with Russia and obstruction. But a new chapter has begun as the public and members of Congress scrutinize the president's conduct and determine whether it's befitting of the office of the presidency. Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee, as we heard there, uh, Jerry Nadler, saying today he will subpoena for the full and redacted report, is once again calling for Mueller to testify and said impeachment is one possibility. On the other hand, the president's team says Mueller's report reads like a reluctant declination letter and claim the case is closed. Wolf.
Pamela, stay with us. Our analysts and our experts are with us as well. But I first want to bring in our senior justice correspondent, Evan Perez, and our justice reporter, Laura Jarrett. Uh, they were among the first journalists to review the redacted Mueller report. Uh, Laura, you have been you're reporting uh, that some congressional leaders will, will be allowed to see a less redacted version of the Mueller report. Who specifically does that include? That's right. We're learning, according to a new letter from the Justice Department, Wolf, that the Attorney General is going to allow, starting on uh, uh, the 22nd, I should say, to the Gang of Eight, which is typically the top leaders on the House and Senate Intel Committee, as well as leadership in the House and Senate, to see the redacted report that has fewer redactions. He's also going to allow uh, Chairman Nadler, as well as Senate Judiciary Chairman uh, Lindsey Graham, and one staff member. So they will all be able to see this report that has fewer redactions, and it will only be redacted for grand jury information, but everything else will be out in the open. You know, Evan, uh, there seemed to be a, a really major contradiction between what the Attorney General Bill Barr said before the report was released and what the Mueller report actually said when it comes to indicting a sitting president of the United States over obstruction charges. Explain that. Uh, Wolf, I think the word to use here is misleading. I think the attorney general was misleading uh, in his letter and in his characterization of what exactly went in to the thinking of the special counsel. If you read this report, it doesn't say what the what the attorney general said. Who he was describing essentially that the the idea that you cannot indict a president, that the special that the Office of Legal Counsel guidance at the Justice Department, which says that you cannot indict a sitting president, that that was the opera that what that was irrelevant to the decision making here. If you read this report, it tells us that it was. It was a very big part of their decision making. And again, I think this is why uh, members of Congress now have every reason to ask to to see everything and to understand a little bit more about why Mueller and his team decided to leave that question open, that they found evidence that the president was trying to obstruct, and they also found evidence to the, to, to the, to the, to the negative on that, uh, and then they just left it open. Uh, again, it's just one of those things that uh, we were mystified a little bit by the, by the attorney general's press conference today, because then afterwards, once we were able to read the actual words from the, uh, from the report, you can see that there are so many things here that uh, the, the, the attorney general and, frankly, uh, the Justice Department in the past has been mis misleading us uh, about exactly what was going on here. That's an important point. Uh, Laura. The uh, former White House counsel Don McGahn's appearance in the Mueller report is very, very significant, very notable. It says McGahn refused President Trump's orders to tell Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, to fire Robert Mueller. Uh, tell us about that. I don't think McGahn's present calling it uh, explosive would be hyperbole in this situation, Wolf. You get so much rich detail in this report about all of these conversations between the president and McGahn, where they were really going at it because McGahn was trying to constrain him, trying to constrain his worst impulses. And when the president wanted to try to make a move on the special counsel by having McGahn contact the deputy attorney general to have the special counsel essentially terminated, McGahn thought to himself, I would rather resign than have a Saturday night massacre, a reference, of course, to Watergate, on my hands here. And he talks about how he just, he felt the need to not be, you know, used as a tool by the president in that way. And he almost tried to protect him in certain ways. Now, that's not to say that he didn't certainly put pressure on the attorney general, Jeff Sessions, to unrecuse. McGahn did do that. So he doesn't come out completely clean here. But on the issue of firing Mueller, he was adamant that that would be a red line. Laura, stand by. Evan, stand by as well. I want to bring in our experts and our analysts. And uh, Susan Hennessy, you've been watching this about as closely as anyone for the past two years. What's your big takeaway? So I think that there are two major takeaways. The first is sort of on the Russia collusion element. While this clearly establishes and lays out the reason why there weren't additional prosecution decisions, it also clearly establishes that there was a common purpose, that the Trump campaign was, uh, was largely aware of Russian efforts to interfere in the U.S. election. They welcomed those efforts. They believed they were going to benefit from those efforts. They encouraged those efforts. Uh, the only thing that was missing in terms of the actual conspiracy was there was no agreement. There was no meeting of the minds. And so uh, that, that removes the legal question as related to, uh, to conspiracy, but it very much leaves open the question 
question of whether or not that was acceptable conduct by the part of the president. The other major takeaway is that it is on obstruction. Uh, Bill Barr's testimony, if, if Bill Barr had made his statement sort of under oath, it might not have qualified as perjury, but that was incredibly misleading of, to the American public. It's very, very clear that Robert Mueller uh, in no way exonerates Trump on the obstruction question, it lays out in granular and in many cases quite damning detail a course of conduct that, uh, that any reasonable mind could conclude was a violation of the obstruction statute.